Hello, <laughs> welcome to part three of my Plinko challenge. Now, one thing you might notice, I, so my plan here in part three was to work on sound, but actually I, I'm not gonna get to sound probably just in this part three, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second because I have some improvements I wanna make. Number one, you'll notice right now, every single Plinko particle is following the exact same path. So the whole point of Plinko is that well, one of the main points of Plinko is that there should be a 50% chance of it either going to the left or to the right. Oh, but it never goes to the right. It only goes to the left. So let's look at a way that we might change that. So there's a lot of ways we could change that. We, the, remember, we're making these matter.js bodies, and those bodies have a velocity. We could give it like a slightly we, initial velocity in a different direction or something. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like randomly offset it slightly to the left or the right, which will probably do the trick. So if I go into the uh, particle, object, um, I can, right here, each particle is getting an x and y location where it starts. So it, probably, it might make sense to go and actually <laughs> alter the way the x location is set, but just as a uh, quick test right now, I'm going to just say, let's just, let's just, whatever x comes in, randomly offset it a little bit to the left or the right with a random number. So let's do that. And look at that. Oh, it went to the left. It went to the left. It went to the left. I must have done something wrong. Did I not save it? Oh, I didn't save it. <laughs> Let's try it again. Went to the left. Ah, it went to the right. So now you can see whether it's really 50-50. Is this exactly accurate? I'm sure you could improve on this idea. But now we've at least got something happening kind of differently. Now, the, thing, the other thing that I want to do here, though, is that really Plinko, Plinko balls, these Plinko particles that are falling down, right now they're kind of bouncing out in a kind of crazy way, and I really want to see them pick this one, and then this or this one, and then this or this one. I really want them to have that uh, consistent path where they're 50-50 going one way or the other, not sort of bouncing far off to the right or left, just for the sake of argument here. So one way that I might be able to achieve that is by playing with the size of the pegs. Really simple change. So I'm going to go into, the pegs are in this Plinko object. And I'm going to ch just change these to being white also. And I am going to, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to change their size from, uh, oh, where do I create? I create them in sketch.js. I'm looking in the wrong place. Where I set them to, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> where do I make them? Uh, right here, four. So let's give them a size, a radius not of four, but let's try 16. And there we go. So you can say, oh, look at that. It landed right on the top. So you can see now they've really got to make a decision as to whether to go left or right at each and every moment. And just to see how this plays out, and um, let's do a couple things. Number one is let me make them a little bit darker so we see them as slightly different, actually. Um, and then uh, let, me, um, let me drop them more often. Uh, so instead of every 60 frames, let's try drawing them every 20 frames. And let's see, now we can sort of see what's going on here. Uh, so we can really see this has a bit more of a quality. Now, I think I probably would want to play with the friction and play with the restitution, either to make it uh, you know, slipperier or more or less bouncy. Um, just out of curiosity, let's try, um, let's try messing with the friction for a second. So if I go to the uh, Plinko, oh, the Plinko is already set to a friction of zero. The particles are set to a friction of zero, so that's interesting. So I don't know, I'll let you guys, uh, I think I uh, mess around with kind of how, how, um, how some of these um, um, uh, physics settings will, will alter it, and, and you can be, kind of take your own creative take on But you can see now, if we let this run for a little while, it's going to, most of these, we're going to see that uh, bell curve of most of them falling in the center, with every once in a while getting one falling out till, to the edge. So um, now. Let me, well, I'm going to let this run for a while. We'll come back to look at it. Let's just add color to it as well, because we should have rainbow colored <laughs> Plinko things. Um, so uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add a variable. and I'm going to use HSB mode for the color. So first, let me just, so HSB mode is a way of defining color that is uh, in a different way from RGB. So in P5, I can say, let me add color mode. HSB to setup, and let me hit refresh. Ah, so we can see some of the color is off now because what I want to do is actually just set the HSB color. Just want to make it black, so brightness, bright, no brightness, no saturation, and some hue. 
Uh, and so now I have a black background. And I'm going to leave the, uh, I'll leave the Plinko, the pegs as white for right now. That's fine. So now that I have the particles, have, I can add a variable for each particle called hue. And I can make a random hue between 0 and 360. So the default range for hue is 0 to 360 because the hues are like on a color wheel between 0 and 360 degrees. And then here we go. I could just say fill this dot hue. Um, this dot, this dot, this dot, hue. Uh, and I'm spelling hue, H-U, for no reason. I'm just going to call it hue, because that's actually how it's spelled. <laughs> uh, this dot, hue. Um, and then I am going to just give it a saturation of 255 and a brightness of 255. And here we go. So now we've got, oh, and I, I, I lost my, uh, I, was, I was waiting to see how much it fills up. So now I have to talk for a little bit. Although what, what I'm going to do now is have a little edit point in this video. I'm going to take a little nap. Uh, I'm going to go to sleep. When I wake up, a lot of the Plinko, um, uh, I'll wake up from my dream where I'll be dreaming of um, San Diego sounds nice this time of year, and then I'll wake up and see how many uh, where they are. Good night. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, I'm awake. Uh, look, okay. So I took a little nap, and, and when I uh, woke up and pulled my Plinko simulation out of my oven, because I pre-cooked it for this code cooking show thing that I'm doing, uh, you can see that we are getting this nice kind of uh, uh, bell curve where most of the particles fall into the center, and once in a while we get lucky and one falls to the outside. Now they're filling it up too much, and strange things will happen, but that's it. Actually, one thing I want to sort of play with, actually, before I go on to the next video, is I got a suggestion from somebody in a comment somewhere, I have to find this, that I should uh, consider uh, playing with the density of the particles in order to affect their motion as well as the time step variable. So one thing let's just try before I go um, is in the particle, one of the options I can set here is density. And let me go to a browser here. I'm already in a browser. And I'm going to go to the matter.js website. I'm going to go under documentation. And I want to look under body. And I want to look for density. So density, a number that defines the density of the body that is mass per unit area. If you pass the density of your body, you create, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is generally preferable to simply setting the mass and allows for a more intuitive definition of materials. Well, what's the range? Um, oh, default 0 0.001. So that's the default density. So let's see what happens if I give them a much higher density. And let's just do something rather extreme, like 1. And I'll go back to my code. So I don't know if this looks particularly different to you, but this might give them kind of a weightier feel to them in terms of how they interact and work with each other. Um, let me just make sure that, that those values are actually in there. So under the body, whoops, I should see density somewhere as one. OK, so that value is in there. I can't precisely uh, visually see the difference, but this is something that you can use to give to, to try to experiment with different um, qualities of different materials. Oh, and you really can see. Maybe that they're a little they're a little heavier when they land, less that's bouncy. I'm not sure if I'm maybe I'm just speculating, imagining that. The other thing that I want to do is really work with the time step to be a bit more consistent about this. So under engine, the function that I'm using is uh, to update. Um, so you can see uh, update delta. Delta is the time step, right? The value of uh, uh, that moves the simulation forward in time by delta milliseconds. So if you think about it, what is the default delta? Oh, 16.6666 uh, 16 milliseconds. That must be the default. So I'm going to go in sketch.js. And what I want to do is look for in draw where I call engine update. So I'm going to just pass in 16.666. So this should now behave exactly the same way. So this should look no different. But if I make the time step much smaller, like 1.6, whoa, we get some like very strange behavior because, oh, they're moving so, so slowly. I'm creating particles very often, but that time step is so small. But I could make the time step much larger, like 10 times larger. And now you can see, look how fast they're moving through the simulation. So this is also something that I can kind of play with in terms of, you know, if I were to make a much subtle by just kind of like doubling the time step. Um, you can see it kind of has the feeling of moving much more quickly. Um, but that's simply because for each 
frame of animation, I'm moving further ahead in time. So really what you want to put in there depends on what your frame rate is and what the feeling is and you know, are you getting errors, can you correct for those errors. But this is another thing that you can see to play with. Now, here's the thing. Oh, 1,000 divided by 60. Okay, Alka, thank you. <laughs> thank you for pointing this out. So why is that number one, um, why is that number 16.666? Because, um, because uh, um, Matter.js is assuming a frame rate of 60 frames per second. So let's actually look at, we could be kind of crazy about this here. What I can do is I can say console.log frame rate, which is a function in P5 that will give me the actual frame rate that it's rendering. And so I could say 1,000 divided by 60. Because I want to update the engine at a frame, uh, like every moment in time is uh, 1 60th of a second. Is that right? 60 frames per second? I don't know, whatever. Um, so now you can see, but the frame rate that I'm actually really getting is like 30 frames per second. So it kind of makes sense that I want to double that number. And you can see this is now with the, with the simulation running at 30 frames per second. And in that case, maybe it was silly for me uh, back in the beginning when I was trying to get the world to behave a little better to mess with the gravity. So maybe what I really just want is to mess with the density and the time step to get the sort of feeling of how it should look and feel. So now it's probably running a little bit slower because I'm console logging. But this, I think, is, um, this is actually, I think, looking a little bit more realistic. Now, here's the thing. I have a confession. I am coming to you from the future. <laughs> this third part of the coding challenge has actually been recorded a we almost a week later than what you watched in weeks part one and two. But the fourth part of the coding challenge that you're about to watch was recorded in the past. Ooh, in the past. So when you go to get to the fourth part of the coding challenge where I focus on adding uh, sound, um, it, your, the code's actually going to revert to a previous state before this. So as a challenge to you, and maybe I'll record a fifth part at some point, putting them together, you know, if you like some of the improvements I made here, um, you, can see, you, can, you can mix the sound piece that I add in the next challenge with this. When I go and upload the actual code, the example code that you might go and play with and iterate on and make your own creative version of this, that will have the sort of final version, um, then that'll have, that'll have the final version with this 30 frames per second fix, um, the density is a particular variable and the larger pegs. But the sound example won't have those larger pegs. So uh, just so you know, that's the secret truth of all of this. Uh, welcome to the future past thing and I'll see you uh, when, I, when I'm traveling in time in the past if you watch the fourth part of this challenge. Thank you, goodbye.